Hey, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here, I'm Morielle. Today we're doing this, get ready with me. The chit chat part is talking about life, values, money, and how makeup and other little impulse purchases can really kind of steer us off course in terms of what we want for ourselves. This video is loosely based off of Lauren May's video on luxuries, on makeup, and on things that she's willing to pay a higher price for. So if you want to hear all that, keep on watching, we're getting into it right now. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to do today is try out this Candid Glow foundation again on camera because I found that, I don't know, it's something that I like to wear when I'm being creative, which is like today. I'm not really going out or anything. I'm just going to do some chores, but I did want to play around. Ooh, I missed my face for that one. I landed right onto my legs. I did want to um, experiment with this product and see how I can kind of build it up to be a bit of a more potent coverage product because as of right now when I put this on the skin it does give me a really beautiful glow and I also like the way that it kind of I don't know simplifies my routine it's got a little bit of that luminous quality so I don't really feel a need to blend in another luminous product to kind of thin it out or to make it a bit more glowy I feel like I get all of those qualities with this product and it also has a little bit of like a sheerness or a thinness which I do, I do like. I mean, um, even though it doesn't really cover my skin, it does give me just enough, and I do like it. But I also feel like where I need a little bit more coverage is really lacking. So I just put a little bit of the Age Rewind Concealer on my sponge. Like, I directly tapped it on my sponge to my face. And it didn't do all that much, but I feel like it did kind of take down some of the discoloration on my cheeks, a little bit under the eyes. I feel like it also has gotten a bit better with Curology. Like, it doesn't feel as dire. Um... It doesn't feel like I have massive splotches of unevenness on my face. Let me punch you guys in a little bit closer so you can see what's going on. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about today um, while I'm doing my makeup, and I guess I will just show you guys what I'm working with before we actually get started. Um, the first thing that I wanted to show you is a sky blue eyeshadow because I wanted to do I wanted to do a little bit of a bright blue look. So I'm going to go into these kind of bluish shades from the Alva 2 palette as well as maybe the teal from my Huda Beauty palette. Um, I don't really have any inspiration right now because I, I'm trying to hold it together. I'm trying to do like a get ready with me and um, come up with a look that I practiced with yesterday and talk about makeup, its expenses, and things that you can buy instead of those really expensive makeup products that kind of just add up really insidiously. So bear with me please as I walk my way through this very convoluted topic. I don't really have exact speaking points, just kind of a general idea that I'm not super happy with how simple it is to really spend beyond your means with makeup. I watched a video from Lauren May Beauty. Uh, I think, I mean, by the time you see this, it'll be a couple weeks, but for me it was recently. And she talked about, you know, there are luxuries that she is willing to, to pay for, things that she spends good money on, and then there are things that she doesn't feel willing to pay for and she would much rather kind of go the cheaper route. And that made me think about makeup, right? So she says, for her, makeup is one of those things that she's really an artist looking for tools or media that can help her create a finished product. And no matter how luxurious the item is, at the end of the day, the makeup itself is a utility for her. It's a, a tool. Um, and there are things that she spends a lot of money on that other people may think would be ridiculous. And so it was just this conversation about how do you determine value? How does one decide whether a thing is valuable or not, if it's worth it or not? Because, you know, people care about different things. They pay for different things. As someone like myself, I'm not really that kind of bargain hunter. Like, obviously, I love a good deal. I love a bargain. But I'm not buying something just so I can say I got it on sale. Or I'm not doing something with the same kind of... Um, thrifty vigor and so I am willing to spend a lot of money on makeup that is objectively not worth it right so she talks most poignantly to me she talks about this Aesop soap and this fragrance which is extremely expensive so the soap is like $40 for a bottle of hand soap and she mentions that it's a larger bottle of hand soap than your standard bottle of hand soap but to me I don't understand that right like I personally would not spend that much money on hand soap because that's not where my values lie so I thought a little bit about um what I spend money on what I value, things that I actually have in my own life, and how quickly those expenses can really add up. I mean, kind of either whether you recognize how expensive all these different things are or not, they are part of our lives. Um, at least this is a part of my life. These are the expenses that I've chosen to intake and, you know, bring onto my plate. And for that reason, I think in the next month or so, I'm really going to have to pump the brakes a little on the makeup because I've made 
in the last month or so a couple of impulse purchases. Not huge ones. I wouldn't say any of my impulse purchases were more than, you know, $50. You know, if you go to, but if you go to the drugstore and you pick up three or four things, that could easily tally up to 40 something dollars, close to $40 ish. You know, it just really is easy to spend a lot. So let me talk a little bit about what it is that I value and what I'm willing to spend money on and kind of like how quickly those expenses can up. So the first thing I have obviously is tech. Um, and that to me is kind of obvious because I'm filming on a camera uh, every day. I'm using my phone. You know, I have to edit my photos. I have to pay for software. I also run a business that requires a lot of that stuff. So for me, phone, laptop, watch, you know, my Apple watch, actually, I love this thing. And I didn't think that I needed it. Obviously, I, I don't need it. It's not a necessity. But I didn't think that it would contribute to my life in the way that it does. For instance, um, I actually run this, I mean, I don't run it myself, but I participate in this app called StepBet, which is a health and fitness app where basically you wager a certain amount of money, you pay to participate in a game, and the bet is that you are going to be able to walk a certain amount every single week. Um, and those statistics are determined by your own personal health measures, and the most accurate way to check your steps, obviously, is to have a um, thing that can track your steps accurately. So for me, being able to track my health, being able to track my period, being able to measure my heart rate, being able to send and receive text messages and to navigate my maps and do all of those things, having it centralized on my watch is um, not only convenient, but it, it betters my life, right? Being able to participate in this step at challenge, I wouldn't have done it if I just had my phone, right? Because you, you can't rely on your phone being the only way to measure your steps because, you know, you may be doing things without holding your phone in your pocket or maybe, you know, it's not accurate. So there are certain things that are afforded to me because I have this Apple Watch. And um, yeah, I think it was probably like a $400 expense when I got it. I got it at Costco and I don't regret that at all. But $400, that's like nothing to sneeze at. However, $400 is probably, you know, three-ish big makeup shopping sprees. You know, like if I were to purchase just a couple of Charlotte Tilbury items, that would probably get me in the, in the hundreds for sure. Like this product that I was just using this, um, all-inclusive face palette. I think this was well over $80 with tax included and it didn't involve a lipstick. It didn't involve, you know, the other items in her collection that came out at the same exact time. So if we're talking about a laptop, we're talking about editing software, if we're talking about a phone, you know, all of those things can add up very quickly. But to me, technology is something that we use often enough that I use in different aspects of my life enough that I find it worth it to save for technology and more kind of um, modern utilities. Another thing, um, these are just like life expenses. So for instance, when I went to therapy, it was $70 a visit. Uh, I just got my car maintained last week, just standard maintenance, and that was $150. My cat recently went to the vet for regular checkup. She got her regular shots. Um, you know, we checked her weight, we checked her diet. She was having some bad poos and we checked and it was fine. But at the time we were worried about her. That cost us $200, you know, uh, other regular cost of life things. We don't have a gym membership, we're looking into it, but the gym memberships near us are around $60 a month. So that's another expense. If you choose to eat out, you know, maybe it'll cost you something like, I don't know, $50, $60 for two people on a date night. If you, um, you need to be buying, you know, replacement shoes. I had to buy replacement running sneakers the other day because my running shoes had completely worn out and I needed new equipment and that cost me another $100. You know, there are just so many expenses in our regular lives that we don't really even think of. Oh, another one, um, books. You know, I recently started reading a couple of different books and my husband and I went into a bookstore and the bookstore itself is such a lovely experience, you know, like to be surrounded by all this knowledge. I feel like it's such an intimate place to be. Sorry, the cat fur is all over me again. You know, if you're someone who buys books, you'll know for sure that books are a quick expense depending on where you're buying them. And especially if you're not buying them from Amazon, but you're supporting your local, um, bookshop your independent bookshops or even any kind of brick and mortar store it's going to be more expensive and so your books are going to run you probably 20 to 30 dollars a pop if you read a lot like I do and if you're finishing a couple books a week that's going to add up um for me like we're talking about grooming I recently got my hair done I got my highlights in that cost me 300 dollars for a full set of highlights and of course that's not required but I value being able to express myself through my hair and I also value the fact that they have expertise that I don't. They're able to do something 
that I don't want to do. <laughs> I don't want to risk messing it up myself, even if I'm giving them really specific instructions or I have really specific requests. You know, sometimes it pays to just like have someone do something for you that you don't want to bother with yourself. You know, we don't always have to be um, control freaks and wanting to do everything. So, you know, with getting your hair service, you now also have to pay for newer and nicer shampoo and hair products and stuff like that. So that can run you, I don't know, $30 a product. And for me, one of the things that I value is a high quality product for things that I don't need variety in. I don't really need variety in my shampoos and conditioners. I really just have the one, I use it up, and then I get another one. I know there are some people out there who have a variety of shampoos, conditioners, body washes, body scrubs, lotions, things like that. Oh yeah, I recently bought lotion last week and that was $15. Um, but you know, it just it depends on the kind of person you are. For me, I would rather just have the one nice thing, the one nice process, the one nice um, hair product, the one nice hair service. And I know that's not true for everyone. In fact, I've been binging Brad Mondo's videos and you'll know if you watch Brad Mondo that a lot of people choose to do things themselves even if it still costs them a lot of money, even if it won't um, necessarily come out really well, it's kind of that experimental desire to try something by your own hand. And I did that for so many years um, until I realized, you know, I mean, for me, I don't think that you actually save that much money doing things yourself if you're buying high quality product and, um, you know, you're paying people to help you. It just, it ends up not being financially worth it to me. Um, so, so yeah, I just, I, I value that kind of ease of guarantee, like to guarantee that things are going to come out right the first time, to guarantee that there's kind of like a fallback, a fail-safe system if something goes wrong, or if I hate the way that I look, that people are able to help me manage the fallout of that incident. We're also planning a vacation, you know, a vacation stay, and for me it's going to be around a thousand-ish, give or take, for my part of the vacation, and a thousand dollars, you know, although it sounds like a lot, I spend a lot of money on makeup and I'm sure, you know, I have VIB Rouge. I don't think it'd be hard to kind of hit that account requirement every year just from buying here and there. And that's just at Sephora, right? So we're not including all the time and money I spend at Ulta or all the time and money I spend at CVS or on Amazon, right? Like, you know, buying skincare, hair care. There's just a bunch of little things here and there that can add up really, really quickly. So, you know, I'm just thinking about cutting back on some of those purchases, each one of those little drugstore trips I take could be money towards a meal or money towards a snack or money towards um, like a one-time ticket entertainment. You know, there's a seasonal event that's going on when we are going to go for our honeymoon and, you know, wouldn't it be nice for me to pay for that ticket instead of paying for whatever impulse purchases I'm trying to make, you know? I recently saw a bunch of stuff come out on trend mood and of course my first instinct was to say, oh my gosh, I need it, I want it. Um, but it took a little bit of self-control to realize even though I need it and I want it and all, you know, maybe it's perfect for me. Maybe all of those things I just said are true, but wouldn't it be a better use of my money to put that towards something else a little bit more mindfully, right? Um, and you do get diminishing returns with makeup at one point because you, ostensibly, you have what you want or you have more of what you want or more of what you need. And at one point, you get diminishing returns because you're not really needing another blush. Like the difference between one blush and another blush slowly becomes smaller and smaller as you fill in the gaps in your collection. And so like that's another thing. Another one that I was recently thinking about was education. So I went to a gathering for my department at work and I had thought about, you know, the kinds of further education I'm going to have to pursue in order to keep my teaching license. If I'm going to keep that and I want to keep teaching in the public schools here in Massachusetts, I'm going to need to get my master's. And my master's degree, I wrote down it's around $50,000 to get it, you know, per year that I study. Each credit itself is around $916, and each class requires a certain number, number of credits. I think it's like four to five credits per class. There's six credits per semester minimum. You can also go up to like 10 credits per semester. I mean, it's a lot, you know? And it's not simple to just say, oh yeah, I wanna go back to school, and then not have the funds for it. And that's like a big, it's a big fund that I'll have to put together if I wanna go back to school, but you know, those are things that we have to consider as well is education, furthering our education. You know, if it's not my formal education, like through my school, I still want to do my nail certification. I recently, you know, thought about going back to get my level two and three certification for leaf gel training. I did, you know, my level one, and I didn't really think it was all that necessary for my purposes nor did I really learn all that much, but I did it and it's a form of respect to the company and to my clients to show, hey, I'm serious about what I do, um, I'm serious about my business, I want you to take me seriously because 
I'm kind of jumping through these formal hoops, I guess, right, to demonstrate a certain level of respect for the industry that I'm in. And so if I wanted to do that, that would be an easy $300 per class that I would have to save and put to the side because each of these classes, you know, not only do you have to buy all the materials, you also have to make sure that you can take time away from work or whatever you're doing on that day to get trained and you have to travel to a trainer and you have to attend this workshop and you know it is a, a big day-long commitment per module and it's just you know it's not easy to say like I want to pursue education it's one thing to say you want to pursue education and it's another thing to actually have a plan and money set aside to actually do it so you know for me kind of rethinking if I value education so much why don't I have these safeguards in place for me to have the kind of budget that I want and that I need to do what it is that I want to do. It's all a lot to consider. As many of you guys know, I'm pretty young, I would say. I'm in my early 20s, so it's not like I have a rush to figure all of these things out, especially the bigger picture with my master's degree and, you know, if I want to go get like a PhD or if I want to do something entirely different, if I want to go change career paths, if I want to figure out other parts of my life. But it is important to think about what am I willing to pay for? What do I have to be willing to sacrifice in order to get those things that I want? I actually read a book recently by Mark Manson. I think that's his name. He he wrote the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving Enough. Um, but last year he wrote a book called Everything is Eft. And it's a book about growing up and kind of taking responsibility for your own actions and being an adult and what it means to actually be a responsible human in society today. And it really did kind of wake me up a bit and I realized that there's going to be certain compromises that everyone has to make. Everyone has to make compromises. Everyone has to choose a path. You can't have everything you want in life. And for me, I'm thinking about makeup or my, I mean, any other one of my wild vices that I spend on, right? It's not just makeup. I spend on other things too. And I'm not always thinking about the kinds of suffering I'm willing to sacrifice for these bigger goals, these bigger goals like career stability or bigger goals such as being able to take care of my own physical health or being able to take care of my family and my pets and my, you know, my friends and, you know, being able to take a vacation once a year. Those are things that you're going to have to sacrifice for and those sacrifices can be something small like saying no to participating in the Sephora sale or for me saying no to spending my extra bucks or spending $15 to get another $10 back. I don't need to spend that $15. You know, whatever it is that I'm trying to buy, be it a new bronzer, a new highlight, or a new uh, setting spray or whatever, those things are not necessarily as important in the long run to some of these bigger values that I have. So that's what I wrote down, things that are expensive versus other luxuries in my life, things that I'm willing to spend on versus things that I'm not willing to spend on. And I don't really know what to make of all of this. I mean, at the end of the day, it seems like Given the money, you can always find a way to spend it all and then still be lacking. I think unless you are part of the ultra, ultra wealthy, um, and I'm talking about, you know, like, more money than you even know what to do with. People who have, oh, I got mascara on my nose. People who have billions of dollars and are sitting on money, making their own money. I guess if you are in that position, it can be really easy to, like, buy everything that you want and then have money left over. But for someone like me, lifestyle inflation is very real. Um, and I'm actively trying to push back against it. You know, I've talked about moving in the autumn this year, and we're actually moving to a place that's much cheaper, actually half the price of what it is to live here, because we don't want lifestyle inflation to happen to us. I mean, it, it can creep up really, really fast. It doesn't even feel like I'm spending lavishly, right? Like, that's the other part, is it doesn't always have to feel like you are even getting anywhere for you to be making a costly mistake. And um, it feels the same way as my diet, uh, you know, there are many times that I tell myself, you know, I'm eating really well, I'm not having extra snacks, I'm not doing things here or there that can sabotage my health, but at the end of the day, I look at my diet, I look at the number on the scales and what I've been doing nutrition-wise, and there's no progress because it's really easy to kind of make little, I don't want to call them errors, but it's really hard to make no allowances, right? It's really hard to stick to your rule and do it all the way through the first time and perfectly. So I just wanted to sit down and talk about you know, out loud, what are some of those things that I value? What are some of those things that I want to think about instead of mindlessly frittering away my money on, you know, new skincare gadgets or a random lipstick here and there? The random lipstick here and there, right? My two Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, this is not one of them, but I do have these beautiful rose gold Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. You've seen them, the new um, Love Kiss ones. They were like $40 each and I bought two, so that's $80 right, right there. Um, I also want that NARS 
face palette. I think that one is also $60 or something like that. In front of me is my Plain Jane palette. That was $65 plus there's shipping. All of those things add up really quickly. Um, I keep stalking the Glamnetics website like every single day. I'm like looking at the Glamnetics website and these little things, they don't really seem like that much money until you actually pay for them and then you get them and then you realize, whoa, wait a minute, I've been spending way more money than I can actually afford on this stuff and Maybe I need to dial it back a bit. And maybe this is like a me problem and no one else is spending beyond their means or um, without their realizing and it's really just because I have an insane sense of money. But I wanted to come out here and be open and vulnerable and honest about, you know, how simple it can be to lose sight of your big goals because little temptations are everywhere. Like little things that are pretty, that are interesting, that are new and shiny and better. You know, yesterday I went to the fabric store and I almost picked up $30 worth of fabric because I just thought it'd be nice to have them for a project. You know, people who sew, you guys know, like fabric stashes are a real thing. <sighs> so I'm trying to be more intentional, um, you know, with the one month of not unemployment, but I don't get paid for a certain amount of time because there's a delay between when I actually work for summer and when I actually get paid for summer work and that dearth is coming soon so I'm preparing for that I'm fluffing my nest up a little bit extra right now to make sure that I have enough room and money to get me through this time and to also pay for some of the things that I value right making sure that I have what I need to really enrich my life in a way that is meaningful so hopefully this was not um, a totally useless conversation but if nothing else uh, I hope you like this blue eye with the lilac slash blushy cheeks and the pink lip I don't usually do this kind of look um, but I just thought it'd be fun to put on something really dramatic as we talk about a life topic and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching I love you guys let me know down below if you have any other topics you'd like me to cover or makeup you'd want me to touch or play with or what have you I love you and I will see you very soon bye